Afternoon, the one which has been dominant in Europe for the past 12 months, or the one which has struggled miserably in the league. You know, this should really be a side that's gained confidence with back to back wins. And I think the major reason is the manager now seems to have a settled side in his mind. They seem to be consistent and they certainly seem to be more of an emphasis on getting forward and attacking other sides. We seem to constantly talk about the impact Steven Gerrard has on this side and uh, there's every reason for that but of course the likes of Alonso, Sissoko and Garcia have certainly made better contributions of late and uh, in Gibral Sisi seems to have uh, found a player, the manager that uh, does get important goals and can he continue that today? Well, they had the horrors on Halloween. Have Aston Villa got any fireworks for their fans on November the 5th? I don't suppose there are too many in the Liverpool ranks who will know about Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot. And this team trying to do what would be a first for Rafa Benitez in his time in England, that is to win a midweek European clash and the following weekend come up with a victory in the Premiership. was a great month in the Premiership. The goals ratio up to over 2.7 per game. This is the first game in November. It's here for you on Prem Plus. It is Aston Villa against Liverpool, and it's live right after the break. Here we go then, Aston Villa against Liverpool with Brian Marwood and Martin Tyler. Well, we're underway here for the first time this season with the winter ball, the high visibility football, which is now to be a regular feature of Premiership football until the end of February. Aston Villa are close to a crossroads, you feel, in the boardroom and maybe on the pitch as well. And they're facing a Liverpool team that put together a couple of good results but still under Rafa Benitez haven't performed with any great consistency away from home in the Premiership whether there's been midweek European action as an explanation or not 23 away games since he took over the job Rafa Benitez in the league and only five wins room for improvement Javi Alonso and Jamie Carragher. Kevin Phillips would be delighted to be reunited with Milan Baros. It's only the third time that David O'Leary has been able to field them. Baros got a goal early on his debut against Blackburn. Uh, Phillips got the winner here in Birmingham across town at St Andrews. Those are the only two Premiership victories for Aston Villa so far. Makings of a good combination, these two. And I think Phillips will just drop a little bit deeper, Martin. Barros will play on the, on the shoulder of the two centre-backs and look to try and use his pace and get in behind. And Phillips has the ability to pick him out with some uh, clever play. Marientes and Cissé, two strikers. For Rafa Benitez away from home, Steven Gerrard. As expected on the right, Luis Garcia, who can uh, play in a whole variety of positions, starting on the left. cissé has got ten goals this season, only a couple of them in the uh, league. But he has got that touch, and at the moment he's edging out Peter Crouch, who would have loved to have had an opportunity, might get an opportunity later on to get his first Liverpool goal on a ground that he knows pretty well from his time as an Aston Villa player. It's been easy for Peter Crouch or Gibral Sisi or Morientes at times, Martin, because of the way that the formation Rafa Benitez has tended to play for the majority of the season with only one up top. You know, I think uh, any striker will tell you, you know, it's hugely beneficial when you've got another body there just to take the weight and the strain. And I think that uh, Liverpool will certainly benefit with playing two up there. One or two little alterations in midfield for David O'Leary since Monday. Steve Davis is uh, playing on the right-hand side. Milner across to the left. They've been two of the more consistent players that they've been able to field since uh, Milner, of course, came to Villa Park from Newcastle. 
It's on loan here in the Midlands. Cissé. Malberg. And the ball just uh, zipping uh, across him a little quicker than he thought. He's hooked it away from an immediate danger. The referee, incidentally, is Steve Bennett. He's got an international commitment next weekend. He takes chance of France against, takes charge of France against Germany, which is a great chance for to show that uh, he might be in the reckoning for World Cup selection. Sorensen back in full working order. Taking that free kick. Forward by Finnan. Off goes Cissé. Well, and Olof Melberg have been rather in the firing line, not by name, but David O'Leary has been talking about needing to strengthen in the centre of the defence, so I guess they know <laughs> what direction the criticism is aimed. Here's Luis Garcia. Working with Morientes. So, so just looking across in the middle to make sure he stays on side. Gerard has strayed from the right. Here's Finnan. Javi Alonso, it's good passing this from Liverpool. And uh, a decent strike at the end of it from Luis Garcia. What a goal that would have been. Terrific passing there. And Villa couldn't match the quality that Liverpool showed. You know, they zipped the ball around on a decent surface and clever play. Alonso very much in the thick of the action and then Garcia isn't too far away with the strike on goal and that's a, a little early warning for Aston Villa. It's a Villa side that have been very suspect defensively, will be nervous, edgy and Liverpool will hope to play on that fact very early in this game. Recently restored to the team after his uh, date with the surgeon and the knee problem. Away by Risa. Melberg. Barosh. Back at another well known to David O'Leary from their time together at Leeds United. Davis. And by the head of Herpia. Davis again on. You see what they're searching for. Over Phillips. Yeah, they see what they're searching for, Martin. You know, the fact that they know Barros is a willing runner up there and they always likes to get in any space left behind. And they're just trying to knock little balls in behind the two centre backs and hopeful that that pace that Barros does have will prove beneficial. There's a precedent for Milan Barros. The last time Villa beat Liverpool here in the Premiership, both goals in a 2-1 win were scored by a former Liverpool striker, Stan Collymore. That was John Gregory's first match as uh, manager of Aston Villa. Still here today, and the tie looks as though it's claret and blue. Has <laughs> he not uh, got rid of his uh, previous club time since he was manager here? Of course, John Gregory played for Aston Villa. He served Brian Little as a coach for Aston Villa and then got the top job himself. So, no surprising if the allegiances are still there. Morientes really forcing their way to get across Ridgewell by the near post. And by Finnan. Collected by Sissoko here. Xabi Alonso. Very nearly a clever ball, wasn't it, from uh, Alonso? Well, if we're talking about John Gregory's first match, this is David O'Leary's 100th in charge of this West Midlands club, a club with such a proud tradition. But marking time, a little bit uh, too safe in the policy. Those are the sort of things that are being said about the present day Aston Villa. 
shouldn't forget that in the uh, minefield financially, football at this level, and Doug Ellis has kept things safe and sensible and on an even footing. And his contribution, when he does eventually bow out, should not be underestimated. The problem is, though, Martin, that uh, the expectations of this uh, football club is one that they really need to push on and contend for a, a top-four spot. And unless you invest in the team, that's not going to happen. Here's Backer. Missed uh, virtually all of last season with the uh, knee trouble. Delighted to get a chance to, to play again and to play again in the Premiership, the Norwegian. Was a, a good player, didn't he, a few years ago when he played at Leeds United. Remember those surging runs from the heart of midfield and a very powerful player. And, uh, he'll be hopeful and certainly David will be hopeful he can get back to that type of form that uh, made him one of the most outstanding players in the country. Maros. factor of Aston Villa that isn't always appreciated is how they are continuing to produce players of their own like uh, Stephen Davis Liam Ridgewell of course has come through the same year in the youth team a team that won the FA Youth Cup back in 2002 Luke Moore who's a substitute today was also in that side Backer. Chase down anything he can. Slipping over there. Has been a little bit of rain falling in the last hour before kickoff. Certainly always a willing runner, isn't he, James Milner? I think uh, very difficult for the, the wide players on, on both sides, really, to get involved in the, in the match. It's very narrow, the way that uh, Liverpool and Villa are set up. Not an awful lot of space in midfield, and because of that, the strikers at both ends have been starved of any real service. Phillips. He can get back off the referee. Melberg. Mark Delaney, another recently restored to full fitness after missing a chunk of this season. Gerard. The angle by Xabi Alonso to Sissoko. Sissoko's making the run. Gareth Barry just tucking in and making sure that he didn't uh, get there before Sorensen. He pull up a little bit there, Sissoko. He's not moving particularly easily in the last uh, five minutes or so. He's uh, involved in a challenge with Ridgewell that uh, has looked a little bit uncomfortable. McCann. Soko, who uh, was involved in an incident in midweek where an opponent was sent off for an alleged racial comment in the direction of the Liverpool player. Risa, has got uh, World Cup playoff action to come later this month with Norway. Gerard. Takes that better than Barry, who's just been able to reposition. Finn trying to get down the outside, he got there, but Gerard slipped at the crucial moment of trying to deliver the pass, which could have opened up Villa again. He lost his footwear, Martin, and uh, Gareth Barry, but uh, just a little tug on Stephen Gerard. And to be fair, the referee, and it's great to see that he's allowed Liverpool the advantage because Gerard was in a, a really decent situation, but it was a raking crossfield ball from. Jamie Carragher that found his skipper on that right-hand side. So now uh, Gareth Barry is going to have to lock horns with Steven Gerrard with the burden of a yellow card to his name. Carragher.
Here's Rita. Liverpool, of course, are a couple of games behind most of their rivals in the lower half of the table as we start this Premiership weekend. The win here would certainly, uh, uh, a couple of hours or so, take them into the top half. Aston Villa down in the bottom five. Xavi Alonso. Morientes. It's Garcia trying to make it his. He has done. Carroll trying to take it on the burst. The crowd from the Holt stand was a handball against the Liverpool skipper. Certainly suspicion wasn't there of a handball from Steven Gerrard. I don't think the referee gets a, a great view of this, but uh, as he just uh, forges his way into the box, clear handball, but yeah, that's a problem that Steven Gerrard will pose Aston Villa once he comes off that far touchline and just wanders across the, the front two. Very difficult to pick up. He's made a run to the right and got the ball from Cissé. Here's Gerrard, he wasn't going for goal. He saw Luis Garcia coming in. Well, trying to pick him out. I thought he might have pulled the trigger himself here. You know, CC delays, and that just gives Ridgewell enough of an opportunity to get back and redeem the situation. But you know, got opened up there again with the movement of Steven Gerrard coming in field. Good passing ability in that midfield area. They got Gerrard into a decent position. That's careless by Steve Finnan. Such a busy season generally for Liverpool. They may be behind in their membership fixtures, but this is their 22nd competitive game already. Petrol who likes that diagonal ball with his left foot to the right hand side. Uh, Milner is at the moment, he's swapped with Davis. He's uh, forced the corner here. He showed enough of it, didn't he, to uh, reset? allow the Liverpool left back to make a challenge but uh, that was better play when they have got into wide areas and opened Liverpool out looks a lot more effective the home team Nelberg got it down towards the Barosh to Soko so, left back Risa tried to make an attacking angle way away from his uh, berth in the team Opportunity on the uh, say so of the assistant, yeah. Another opportunity though, Martin, to get that uh, ball into the penalty spot area. It's uh, one or two bodies in there. Liam Ridgewell, of course, scored his first Aston Villa goal on uh, Monday at Manchester City. Gave him a sniff of a chance of recovery, no more. Rayner. Hasn't always in his short time in England looked over comfortable with the balls played across him in the air. And of course, he's now got uh, senior competition. With Jersey Dudek available again. Of course, hasn't played since being the hero in the end of the Champions League triumph in Istanbul. Uh, Villa have had a problem with is when they are playing balls into the feet of Kevin Phillips. It would be fair to uh, either Hoopier or, or Carragher, they've actually gone in and challenged him and not made it easy for him to turn and try and thread little balls through to Barros. Cissé cleverly done, he was off the return ball but it was not a good one from Morientes. He's had a bit of pain, Cissé, and we suspect he has. From an early challenge here, he's doing his best to run it off. Stephen Davis is very confident on the ball.
Backer. Milner. It's not a bad ball, you know, but unfortunately Backer couldn't really cover the ground to get forward from midfield. Well, one by Ridgewell. Not found by McCann, but Arosh and Phillips were still making their way back. Luis Garcia. to keep it in after an average touch when the uh, cross originally dropped Milner he's a hard man to uh, get round Jamie Carragher good defending he knew exactly what he was doing there in control of the situation you can sense the, uh, if you like, the lack of trust in the team from the home fans. Mm. You can pick up that frustration that they're, uh, they're all feeling here at Villa Park. The results haven't been great. A lot of stories coming out of the club about uh, sort of potential takeovers. Well, the supporters, probably rather than a takeover, want a makeover. To the side, but that can't be done easily these days. We've got the restrictions of the transfer window, of course. David O'Leary has certainly been bringing in his own players bit by bit. He uh, started with Gavin McCann, and he's got available again after his recent injury problems. Sorensen was his signing. And obviously, more recently, the likes of Barosh, Milner. Our players like Delaney have been here for a while. Melberg. I remember David O'Leary's first game. I think it was at Portsmouth. He left Melberg out as if to say, well, I'm going to make a statement. And he might have thought about leaving him out from time to time since, mm. but I don't think he's had the luxury of being able to get that sort of competition for places. Oh. Well, was very up lucky. And it was probably just as well for <laughs> Mark Delaney. He's very lucky, Martin. It was uh, given as offside. Well... The linesman flags and uh, clearly right, is right offside, so, but yeah. uh, Delaney here slips and then pulls Garcia back. And uh, not that I don't think he would have got uh, a red card because I don't think it was a goal scoring opportunity, but he definitely would have got a yellow if Garcia had been on site. Milner. It's a lot to take on. It's a great ball through to Barros and a wonderful tackle by Jamie Carrigan. Draw defending. Absolutely top draw defending from Jamie Carragher. You know, he really has been a model of consistency over the last two or three years and converted successfully into a centre back. And you know, the thing that impresses me is just the way that he reads situations. You know, he had no real right to get that ball from Barros. And Barros looked as if he was going to get on the end of a clever little ball from Milner and then up pops Carragher to make a very, very fine challenge. Taking the free kick, but after the tackle, he turned and I think raced into Javi Alonso, who had uh, maybe sensibly turned his back and <laughs> yep. gone away from it. Well, he was careless, wasn't he, in uh, possession, Alonso? He'd give the ball away. And it's that sort of mistake that's been costly to Liverpool in away games and the Premiership in particular. That one in the away fixture this season, there haven't been too many of them. They've drawn it. Middlesbrough and at Tottenham, they were nil-nil. Here in Birmingham, at Birmingham City, 2-2. Two -two. They needed a late penalty awarded by today's referee, in fact, Steve Bennett, to get that draw. And, of course, they've lost more recently at Fulham. Yeah, identified Liverpool making mistakes. And, you know, we've got two sides here that have been guilty of that this season. And uh, it's one of the reasons why, you know, the game at the moment has been scrappy. Not an awful lot of room afforded to... Uh, one or two, the so-called quality players, the, the technicians, the ones that can make the game turn very quickly with a, just an eye of the needle pass or a, or a clever strike from distance. 
Only Manchester United have had more Premiership wins over Aston Villa than Liverpool. Only Arsenal have scored more Premiership goals against uh, Aston Villa than Liverpool. So, uh, today's visitors enjoy their trips down the M6 to Villa Park. And that's not a great challenge by Gavin McCann on Jon Anarisa. One time Everton player has uh, got a booking against Liverpool here. He just showed enough of the ball to make uh, Gavin McCann interested in making the challenge there. And uh, many times you see that happen where a player lunges and doesn't get anywhere near the ball. You get the feeling though, Martin, if, if Liverpool can just step it up a notch or two, you know, there's a result here for them. And, I think that if you ask a lot of Liverpool fans, they'd probably say that's been the story of their season. Long throw, nearly caught out Aston Villa in a manner which would have infuriated David O'Leary. Luis Garcia. Milner. Barosh. Suzoko. Came in in over-robust fashion. The card is out again from Steve Bennett. Had no alternative, had he? You know, he just previously booked Gavin McCann for a, for a late challenge, and that's exactly what uh, Sissoko is culpable of as well. So, uh, the referee showing that consistency. Backer variation from the free kick. There was one message, I guess, to uh, the Liverpool players about Milan Barish, their former colleague. Don't let him run with the ball. And he was setting off then, admittedly, from a deep position. Alarm bells were ringing for Sissoko. A lot of times you're not really sure what he's going to do next. I don't think the times he knows what he's going to do next, but he's a talent, still very young. for Villa here. Liverpool just a little bit slow in getting the numbers up. But, uh, they can come back now in droves to defend the free kick. Two central midfield players there were at the root of the problem. Initially Sissoko giving the ball away needlessly and then Alonso giving away a, a silly free kick in a, a very promising area here. If the delivery is right, Very nearly was right. That oh, was a fantastic ball into the danger, and the one player you really wouldn't have thought would out jump any defender would be Kevin Phillips, but uh, he's the first to the ball. Got the likes of Hubier and Carragher and, and Reese are in there to deal with that situation, and arguably the smallest player amongst that group is the one that gets ahead of. Barry. And Phillips uh, just eased Sissoko to the ground after the ball had gone. McCann. Davis. Backer. And the flag goes up. And Barosh is denied potentially a magical moment against the former club. Yeah, it's good defending this because when this ball comes square from Davis, you can see that Liverpool back four and everybody steps up in the line. And that's good defending. How many times do you see that happen? And one might just get left in and play everybody onside. That wasn't the case there. And you've got uh, the likes of Hoopier and, and Carragher within the mix there. You know, terrific defenders. We've seen that already from Carragher in this game. Well, I have been periods already in which Liverpool have passed the ball around quite nicely maybe not quite at uh, top pace for a real penetrating play but promising enough and then two or three occasions when uh, Aston Villa have just threatened the Phillips header the Milner pass towards Barosh that Carragher rescued 
for that wonderful challenge. back and trying to turn back up who fouled him Risa Javi Alonso Gerard Again, though, Martin popping up in that area where he's very, very difficult to mark. You know, I think the Villa side expects him to be on that right hand side, and just occasionally he's coming in, in towards that midfield area and, and causing problems, especially when Alonso's on the ball because that, he has the ability to pick out his skipper. He's clever little through balls. Phillips. Scored uh, against Liverpool in the past for. Southampton and for Sunderland. And he scored against uh, most clubs in the past that he's played against. He's still got that eye for an opening. Tempted uh, David O'Leary to bring him here. We're talking about players that David O'Leary has brought in. Kevin Phillips in that category. Even at the age of 32. I think he actually wanted to get him here when he, uh, when he raided Sunderland and uh, took Sorensen and McCann. Unfortunately, he couldn't, uh, couldn't get the three of them. He eventually got him, but... Uh, this game is uh, just on the edge, isn't it? You know, we yet to see it ignite. Amongst the Liverpool substitutes today, Harry Kuehl, for whom 2005, uh, apart from starting the Champions League final, which he didn't uh, finish, of course, has been a pretty lean year. His last goal for Liverpool was in this fixture last season, December 2004. It finished 1-1. He seems happy enough. He's going off to uh, play for Australia in the World Cup playoff. Away and home against Uruguay. Kevin Phillips is uh, he's telling Stephen Davis that ball's got to be played in a lot earlier. Well, Cissé's timed his run brilliantly. He's in at Sorison here. Best chance for Liverpool. And the goalkeeper got to Gibriel Cissé and stopped the top scorer adding to his tally. Yeah, no wonder the goalkeeper's absolutely furious. This is awful defending. Initially from really when Liverpool have the ball. No one puts Stephen Gerrard under pressure. It's a brilliant ball. I'm not sure there what Gareth Barry and Liam Ridgewell are doing between the two of them because... They're both waiting for each other to deal with the problem. It's a good job the goalkeeper dealt with it. Phillips. Now Barrosh. Milner getting in. Davis. Barry charging up on the left-hand side. Davis looking right. And finding Barrosh. can nice. not hit the middle of the ball at all pull the neck off it but uh, Thomas Sorensen oh, how an important save this could be but just have a look at the defending there I don't know whether Gareth Barry thinks it's he says offside but Ridgewell clearly playing him on and he uh, waits a long long time there so say the goalkeeper stays big that's the most important part the angles are good and that's a terrific save by Melberg here's Javi Alonso Gerard, uh, with the license to roam again even to go and get the ball Carragher the game's First, really clear cut charts. And uh, thanks to Thomas Sorensen, Aston Villa have survived it. Yeah. 
to Lake. McCann. This time, tell you what, though, Martin, you have a look at Ridgewell and Barry again. Very indecisive, you know, they're both looking at each other. You know, who's going to play him on, who's going to play him off? And as he plays that, I actually think he's onside there. He looks level with Gareth Barry. And that's two occasions there in the last five minutes that uh, they very nearly got caught out. I know Gareth Barry's been switched from the left midfield where he's played for much of the season, the left back, but he played for England at left back. It's not as though he's been asked to do a job that he doesn't know too much about. Here's Phillips. And the Wales right back, Mark Delaney, wanting a free kick. Not getting one. The game's crying out for some width, though, isn't it? And I think maybe the full-backs have got to join in. We haven't seen that much of Delaney on the right-hand side. Gareth Barry on the left. Looking for Liverpool, Finnan and, and Risa. today at five o'clock on Sky Sports 2, Portsmouth against high-flying Wigan, Sky Sports 2 at five. Although well, a words exchange between uh, Stephen Gerrard and Mark Delaney at the other end of the pitch, and Delaney tried to claim a free kick that Gerrard thought would have been a pretty soft uh, response from Villa's point of view. Starts with the goal kick. And with ten minutes left in the first half. Great defending again from Jamie Carragher. You know, he knows all about Milan Barros. I don't know whether the flag would going to go up then. If so, it was uh, Liverpool who were had a let off his Cissé. Headed out by Melberg. <laughs> Davis. Backer. Headed under challenge from Javi Alonso. Carragher. A good tackle by Backer. Great challenge, isn't it? Great challenge. The game the just starting to open up. Uh, Javi Alonso as well. Just beginning to open up a little bit more, and just look at the space now that seems to be appearing around the pitch, and so it's a good thing for the game. Morientes losing out to Melbourne. Nice to Villa show that they're capable of winning the ball further forward. And Barros had an easy ball onto the right hand side. To be fair to him, had uh, he accomplished the uh, Reverse ball, Phillips would have been clean in at goal, but it didn't work out for Milan Barros there. Davis. Oh, it's deflected off her, Pierre. Well, they're furious, the fans, because... Uh... The referee's assistant only put his flag up very, very late, but uh, there's certainly a deflection off a Liverpool player here. This ball's looked to play through. He's, he's definitely in an offside position. Kevin Phillips. The pass was aimed for him, so I guess the same passage of play. Yeah. And the thing is, the referee's assistant, this is what makes it very difficult in the eyes of the fans, is they're not allowed to put their flag up until that player gets possession. Davis. McCann. And he caught to Javi Alonso sleeping. Oh, that's amazing. Offside given the ball didn't actually go into the Villa half. <laughs> so there's another <laughs> interpretation on it. Exactly. It's totally opposite from what yeah, we've just seen. Absolutely. But uh, Liverpool attacking with some gusto here. Cissé has had one good chance already in the half. But, uh, here's a bit hit and miss, and Rafa Benitez hasn't really nailed his colours to the Liverpool mask. Cissé's 
Rumours about Cissé leaving Anfield in January. What he has done, he's just uh, changed the, mm. the formation a little bit now. He has given Steven Gerrard a licence to come inside. Cissé's gone over to that, that right-hand side and, and trying to use his pace against Gareth Barry. And trying to hold a high line Aston Villa, so if they can get that ball in behind, you'd fancy Cissé's chances get on the end of it. Can. Sissoko. It's a strange mix this first half of uh, some good things both teams yeah. have put together, but the uncertainty that Aston Villa have with their form generally and the uncertainty that Liverpool certainly mm. have with their away form in league matches and any games on weekends after midweek European action. So it's almost mirrors their, their two seasons, isn't it? That inconsistency. Risa. Javier Alonso, Gerard. All the potential that comes to Liverpool when he's in possession. Here, and wanting some movement from Cissé, he got the movement, and couldn't uh, clip the pass, couldn't put the backspin on the ball. Just to see what uh, Villa do to try and counter-attack. The fact that Liverpool have gone to almost 4-3-3 now. Garcia wide on the left, Cissé wide on the right, Morientes down the middle, Gerard given that, just that free reign to play just in front of Sissoko and Alonso. Didn't give it very long, did he, at 4 no. 4 2? No, he Rafa didn't. Benitez to I think he's desperate to get this. He doesn't fella. really believe in it away from home. He's desperate to get this fella, Stephen Gerrard, in the game more. That's a problem, Martin. You know, when he's playing wide on the right hand side, and if you haven't got decent possession, it's difficult to get him into the football match unless he goes and wanders, as we saw on occasions. So I think he's now given him the chance to, to get more involved in this game. Morientes. Gerrard. Booming the ball right again. He underhit the last one. He certainly wasn't going to underhit that one. And Cissé has fought and won the battle with Gareth Barry. Oh, Two Liverpool players who are rather standing and admiring Cissé. And he's saying, come on. And I think he's entitled yeah. to say he that. Is. He is. And Gareth Barry at times has found this game a little bit uncomfortable as a left back. You know, he really doesn't deal with this when he should do. You know, Cissé gives him a chance there, and then Gareth Barry just thinks that he's going to shepherd the ball out of play. And this is where he's hoping one of his teammates is just going to take a gamble, and Morientes is certainly guilty. They've not really given him an awful lot of movement. Yes, it's strange, Morientes, he's got such a, a fabulous record, 100 goals for Real Madrid. That is a, a terrific achievement in anyone's money. 26 goals, is it, for Spain? So, uh, that agree. It's uh, another one that the jury's out on, and uh, you can probably level that accusation at uh, four or five of these Liverpool players. Keep referring to the World Cup playoff games uh, later this month, and Alonso, Luis Garcia and Morientes named in the uh, Spain party for their attempt to qualify for Germany 2006 via the back door if you like help you which was only cleared it to Cissé looking for Gerard Sissoko Xavi Alonso Luis Garcia given offside at a time where you feel a goal if Aston Villa were to concede one it would have a shattering mm. effect on David O'Leary's team well, it was a late flag but a uh, clever little play from Garcia as uh, he chips that ball into the danger area there's again Steven Gerrard just looking to wander around and trying to find some space Isn't too uh, far from being onside to be fair to Gerrard mm. 
hands on uh, Barros. He thinks he dropped to his knees. Steve Bennett lets the game go on, and again when Davis makes a totally legitimate uh, challenge. Backer misjudged by his fellow countryman Risa. Backer deliver here late in the first half. For Milan Barros, it's just too high for him. It drops to James Milner. of uh, Javi Alonso. Barry. McCann. Well, it's a bit of a ricochet that's come to Milner. And Carrier vigilant as ever. Well, that's better, isn't it, from uh, Aston Villa? No real surprise, it was because they got into those wide positions. Deflected cross from Barry. Half cleared by Gerrard. Back by Melberg. Then Carragher. Melberg will go again here, but he's uh, palpably beaten by Sizoko's height. McCann. It's no more than a half chance, is it? Not renowned from uh, scoring raking. Goals from uh, 25, 30 yards, Gavin McCann. Just have a look at the lack of space in there. There's so many bodies, and I think Gavin McCann thinks, well, why not? I'll try and look from distance. A long way wide. It'll be uh, five years in February since Gavin McCann so far won England cap. This is Sven Joran Eriksson's first game here against uh, Spain. Had a piece of that. Oh, just uh, moments, there have been moments in this match where you can see why uh, he was picked for England. He's a little bit unlucky, hasn't he, over uh, recent years with injury, to be fair to, to Gavin McCann. Just one minute to go of added time. Thomas Sorensen save from Gibril Cisse, undoubtedly the moment of the half. So a good comeback from that injury in the warm-up on Monday. The City of Manchester Stadium. It's actually a back problem caused by going over on an ankle. Phillips, Barros. He's unlucky, isn't it? Milan Barros, you know, it really gives you great endeavour and energy up front. That's a decent first timer from Morientes. Showing that though form might be temporary, class is permanent. Thank you. In danger of a uh, Losing the ball then, a little bit too debated half time. Thomas Sorensen with a superlative save left the one on one as Cisse advanced. And Jamie Carragher with one terrific tackle on his old uh, mate Milan Barros. But some wonderful work at the back throughout this first half. Part of the reasons why at half time here at Tefilla Park it's Aston Villa nil, Liverpool nil. Well, moments of encouragement for both sides, but nothing of substance as yet. We'll have George's thoughts after the break. Uh, Gibril Cisse had perhaps the best moment of the half, but Thomas Sorensen made himself big, and that's why we're still waiting for the first goal. Prem Plus, in association with Bet365. For live premiership action later this afternoon, it's Portsmouth against high-flying Wigan. That is from 5 o'clock on Sky Sports 2. Football first this evening with Claire Tomlinson from 8.25 on Sky Sports 1. Your definitive roundup of everything that's happened in the premiership during the course of the day. And from La Liga this evening, Villarreal and Valencia from 8.30 on Sky Sports Extra. Half-time at Villa Park, it's goalless. Liverpool bossing it, George, without really looking convincing. Yeah, they're winning possession, Marcus, but there's no end product to their play. You know, when I look at uh, CC and Morientes, you know, names, but, I, you know, I don't know why. You know, they're not producing, they're not getting the goals, they don't even look as if they're scoring the goals. You know, when you think of the Liverpool greats, Daglish, uh, Keegan, Michael Owen, uh, Ian Rush, it must be heartbreaking for those fans watching the, the strikers have got at present time. And what do you think the Villa fans will have made of their own team today? Hey, uh, lacking in confidence, probably th more or less thinking of stopping Liverpool playing. Um, but they've not really committed the game. I think there's goals in, in the Villa team. I think uh, Phillips, 
and Barros. I think there's goals there, but they've got to win the midfield, dominate the midfield and create the chances. But it was Kevin Phillips who came closest, George. Excellent free kick. Excellent free kick. Just needs a little touch. Unfortunately, it wasn't on target, but a great free kick there. Very hard to defend against Marcus. It's strange to see that the smallest man on the field getting above those tall Liverpool defenders. But it just shows you, you know, you don't put a lot of height in the free kick. You really whip it in at head height, and it's a matter of who's going to get there first. So you don't really have to out-jump a lot of people. And look how dangerous that was. Gibran Cissé had the clearest opportunity. Inevitably, it was a Steven Gerrard pass. Uh, Gareth Barry's having a few problems at left-back holding his line. Was right. the problem here for Cissé that he simply had too long to think about it? Yeah, I mean, you expect him to A, first of all, to do a lot, lot better, and B, to be fair to the goalkeeper, excellent goalkeeping. Stood up as long as possible, Marcus, made himself big. And as soon as he stopped, Cissé, the goalkeeper said, go on, beat me. And the frustration, Excellent. the frustration's been etched all over the face of Gibraltar. Very much so. But what I found interesting as well, Mark, is that to Steven Gerrard, although he's supposed to start on the right wing, he's just floating all round the pitch. And who's playing on the right wing? Cissé. So inv invariably, they're only playing with one, one striker, Morientes. We know that you love good defending, so we've picked out the best bit of um, defensive play from Jamie Carragher midway through the first half, a tackle that you were purring about. You've also loved yeah. the way that the Liverpool back four have held yeah. their line. Yeah, they've held their line superbly. They don't try to be pushed into the box. When they play, this is a, this is a magnificent tackle. <laughs> I mean, that is you know, one of Bobby Moore's at his best. Go and have another look at it. It really is. And if he doesn't time this to perfection, Marcus, that's a penalty kick. That's either a pen left, it was in the box. I it, think it was it, just outside. Is that sort of tackle as good as a 30-yard volley for you, George? Well, I mean, let, let's be honest. The, the, the standard of defending in this country is not the highest, but that was top draw. It is nil-nil at half-time, so both teams are defending adequately, for the moment at least. Villa fans haven't had a lot to cheer about in recent weeks, nor have they. Let's hope for better in the second 45. Prem Plus in association with Bet365. Rod Little is famous for it. I think men and women have their brains in different places. He wants to find out why he did it. I think men are so flattered by a bit of female attention. Yes, we are. Infidelity, Monday at 9, Sky One. Hey up, you neighbours. Suppose better go and say hello. OK. You all right? So you've got the new Safari then? Yeah, brand new, found your butchers. Glass roof. Overhead storage. Sat nav, keeps them out of trouble. <laughs> My mother bought us that. Oh, oh the tires. All new Zafira from Vauxhall. One bacon, egg, cheese and a beer or two bagel with an orange juice and a latte, please. I got you, uh Wow! You went to all this trouble just for me? Look, I won't tell all your mates you've cooked me breakfast in bed. I didn't. Uh, I just went to McDonald's around the corner. <laughs> You're so funny. They don't do bagels. Yes, they do. Oh, I love you. Freshly ground coffee and filled breakfast bagels, now at McDonald's. I'm loving it. Let's go. Bring it on. Fire. Should I tell an Amazonia again? No! <laughs> you, you, you know? Compact sports section, every day in the Daily Telegraph, packed with world-class sporting opinion. Paul, can I show you something? Sure. Look at what I've just invented. Well, it's a debit card. Yeah. No, it's a debit card that turns invisible. It's gone? Yeah, it's virtually theft-proof. That's fantastic. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> You're a genius! What? <laughs> <laughs>
At Barclays, we're always looking for new ways to protect you from fraud. Barclays, now there's a thought. Oh, it's about a penny. Uh, is this a help desk? Yes. We need some help. With what? Super Sunday certainly lives up to its billing tomorrow. Manchester United against Chelsea from three on Sky Sports 1. And from La Liga tomorrow, Real Madrid against Zaragoza and Hetafe and Barcelona from six on Sky Sports 3. Goalless at half-time at Villa Park. George mentioned the lack of understanding between Morientes and Cisse up front for the visitors. Classic example of this, George, just before half-time when the ball is well won by Cisse, but Morientes does nothing. Yeah, it just stands still, Marcus. And all good goal scorers always anticipate he should be running into the six-yard box there, Morientes. He should do that nine times out of ten. He should just go there, go there. He won't get it nine, you know, nine times, but the tenth time he'll, he should be making a run into the box there. But he's, he's such an experienced and successful striker. So, so what's his go goal thought Marcus, he doesn't there? seem his, bo his body language doesn't seem right to me. He looks as if he's a very unhappy player there. Don't know the reason why. You know, I mean, he's in a good team. Uh, well, a goodish team. He uh, should be scoring goals, he should be looking as if he's scoring goals, but Liverpool have dominated possession in the first half, but not a lot of uh, creativity in the box. And you want to see them up that tempo in the second 45, yes, don't Yes, I think the, 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 the passing is good, but it's a very slow tempo. They've got to really up the tempo a lot more if they've got to uh, capitalise on their possession. And just about everything has gone through that man. Let's rejoin Brian Marwood and Martin Tyler. Yes, Marcus, it's his 300th game for Liverpool. I guess we'd be talking 400-plus up for the injury problems he's had earlier in his career. And England fans will be hoping he gets through this second half and can take part for England next weekend when they play Argentina in Geneva. Steve Bennett and the players are ready, but uh, some uh, flag wavers on behalf of some local sponsors still on the pitch. Not like the old days when you couldn't get the marching band off at half time. Couldn't get the tombola drum. <laughs> Serious business afoot now for these two teams in the second half. Been a fair bit of sparring in the first period. There's just a few real chances. But the, uh, the boost that a victory brings been much needed uh, in either camp here. The showers before kickoff have given way to. Some afternoon sunshine in the West Midlands. The half time team talk has been delivered. Maybe one or two cases translated. McCann, that's Sissoko, is in strongly. That's very much his game. Morientes. Cisse. Starting the second half as he finished the first on the right. That was an interesting one for me because the referee's assistant initially didn't flag for a free kick. Gareth Barry then clearly handles the ball. Cissé chases again and Ridgewell's touch and he takes it behind for a corner. Well, the pace that he possesses is always going to be a threat, Martin, and it's whether you can exploit that pace. You know, getting that ball in behind Gareth Barry could well be the key. So any success Liverpool might just have here. Well, the only away goals that Liverpool have scored in the Premiership this season have been in the city of Birmingham against Birmingham City. Diverted away by Delaney. Phillips helps out as well. Barros just ran underneath the ball. Barry. It's an air of uncertainty around the stadium. Continues at the start of the second half. Sizoko. Morientes. Uh, 
Taken away once, has lost it a second time. Peter Crouch will be thinking, I'm going to get on here. Let's look how congested it all is, though, Martin. That's been the, the problem throughout this game. This has not been an awful lot of room for, uh, for anybody to really operate in. Uh, usually misjudged by Gerard after Risa had tried to introduce a bit of width with an extravagant switch of play. McCann. Risa thought he might have got there and thought better of it. Milner, Davis, McCann. Oh, trying to slide it through for Barosh. And here's Sammy Herpia loping into midfield. Well, that was better defending that time, but I think when you've got somebody at the pace of Cissé, and if he's got that much space to run into, you've really just got to look to play this ball a lot earlier than what Sammy Hoopia decided to do. That's when he needed to play, and once he'd made that run, he has to check back, and that was better Villa defending that time. It was a decent line. It was enough to catch him offside. Aston Villa have lost their last two home games in the league to Middlesbrough and then to Wigan. Garcia staying down, it's a Villa free kick. It was quick to signal, wasn't it, Garcia to the bench that he was in trouble here. Just, uh, both players, you can see there, Delaney just catches the back of Garcia's left knee. And that's the damage that uh, I think is being done to the, the Spanish. Calf as well that's been affected and don't want to lose him, not in a game such as we've got today, because it has been scrappy and sometimes you need you know, your, your better technical players and Garcia is one of those that just might just spot a pass or, or be able to deliver something that... Well, nick a goal himself, yeah. he, he scored a wonderful yeah. goal on Tuesday. Yeah, great header, great header. He had no real right to score with that header. And he knew exactly what he was doing. And he glanced it on to such a excellent effect. be destined to return flexing that calf muscle but uh, without him Liverpool have got a free kick to defend that wasn't uh, tossed in and now comes in from Milner and it's veering all the while towards goalkeeper Reyna Finnan keeping it uh, away from Barry and there's no flag here Cissé Morientes in the middle Cissé looks for him Nearly dropped Morientes way. Gerard and that's taken away from him by McCann, who was an important figure there for Aston Villa in the end. Well, it's Delaney really is the culprit that plays Gibral CC on side. And once again, you know, if Villa are going to allow that space to for Liverpool players to run into, you know, they're one of these rights, one of these runs that they will get right. And Luis Garcia is back on, incidentally. Sissoko. Well, I just think that Cissé needs to, to make the right option and he fails to do that, really. You get a lot more joy, though, than this right-hand side. Just have a look at Delaney at the top of the picture. He's the one that plays everybody on side. And, and once he's in this position, Cissé, you know, it's always going to be a difficult ball to try and play Morientes in. And Steven Gerrard is just coming behind the play and he just needed that ball rolling into the path of the Liverpool skipper. It was Jim Real Cissé who scored both goals the last time these two clubs met uh, to Anfield at the end of last season. Liverpool won 2-1. It's 0-0 here, still in the formative minutes of the second half. It's been uh, a somewhat tentative tussle, if that's not a contradiction in terms. tentative about the way Milan Barosh gives chase. Aston Villa were unlucky with him. He had this Achilles tendon problem and then the Czech Republic played him and David O'Leary thought that they wouldn't. He came back with the injury worsened again and they've had to wait until today to have him in action. It didn't help was he had an injection as well to try and mask the pain and uh, that really caused further damage. I thought those days had gone. Mm.
Herpia. Finnan. Mariantes wanting it to feet, but Finnan across to Gerard. Back to Sizoko. Crash run wide a couple of minutes ago. Cisse is out. Well, they have carried the greater threat, haven't they, Liverpool? There's no doubt about that. Cisse looks a better player. And a far more menacing option for uh, Rafa Benitez's his team now on this right-hand side. It's whether they can uh, get enough ball out to him to be a threat against Gareth Barry. Alonso knew exactly where Risa was. Ridgewell judged it well. Phillips. Now Davis. Okay. Davis going to get it back from uh, Barosh. Bit of a catchweight contest against the, the size of Suzuko, but Davis. Enjoys those sort of tussles, as you'd expect from someone who represents Northern Ireland. Well, he's gritty, he's determined, and uh, he's arguably been Aston Villa's best player this season, Stephen Davis. Up comes Melberg. In towards McCann. It was a difficult one to take on, wasn't it? I mean, he found himself a little bit of space. He only hits this hard and low and just skips up in front of him. I mean, no one's really picking up Gavin McCann there. Liverpool may well go on and win this game, but we're still in this position where they don't seem to know the language of the Premiership quite as well as the dialect of the Champions League of the European scene, which is being successful again in the, the season's group. No, that job is not yet completed. Delaney. can only take it back into trouble but they uh, kept on going went for Davis who again tried to add a bit of urgency or a bit of confidence really I think it's a lack of urgency deliberately by Aston Villa certainly a lack of self-belief they've lost four of their last five in the Premiership Cesar knocked away by Melberg Phillips trying to worry a mistake out of Herpia Steve Bennett Calls that even. It's a little bit unfortunate, isn't he, Kevin Phillips? Just trying to put his body into Herbier and uh, trying to just work a little bit of a space for himself. Risa. Gerard able to turn. Luis Garcia maybe not at full pace after the injury earlier in the half. Cissé. Okay. Aston Villa again, not really decisive in working the ball forward. But when it's hit forward like that, it will come straight back. No cause for celebration yet in David O'Leary's 100th game in charge of the club. It's Rafa Benitez who's going to make the change though. Malavine's ended. He scored against West Ham. Places Luis Garcia, who has had to give in to that injury. Send in a capable replacement. They certainly go like for like, one will play on that left hand side. And you get the feeling, though, that if uh, one side is going to win this football match, it's going to be Liverpool. They've carried the greater threat in this second period. They're, uh, they're content to, to carry on playing with this sort of high line. Delaney, Ridgewell, Melberg and Barry. They're quite happy to leave a lot of space in behind. Risa gaining a bit of illegal ground. 
tried by Ridgewell, but he wanted too long, having uh, got to the ball quickly. Tendon was the nuisance to Liam Ridgewell, and it's Liverpool throw. And Ridgewell has uh, chanted on about this. Messages, I think. We only need one referee, and it's not you. <laughs> Sorensen going for it, not uh, getting there. Not quite sure what was behind him, and it's Morientes, and Sorensen just about makes up for it. It would have been another of those soft goals that David O'Leary has been berating. That was a real lapse of concentration because it's just a hopeful ball from Risa towards the far post, and. Sorensen clearly misjudges it, whether he thinks the ball's going to drift out of play, but you know, fair play to CC he keeps it alive, and in the end, it's a decent save from the keeper. Cissé again. But what relieved. Thomas Sorensen has done here, he's encouraged Liverpool again, Bahia, and the uh, error a moment or two ago. He just seems to take his arms away, thinking that maybe the ball has gone out of play, and... Morientes does well, really, to get any decent strike at goal. But he hasn't really got enough power behind it to, to trouble the Villa goalkeeper. Melberg. Still more than half an hour to go. Liverpool calling the tune here without being in perfect harmony. Javi Alonso. Carragher. Radiating commitment again, but couldn't quite drop it for where Cissé was trying to get to. Let's see what they're trying to do, though. Jamie Carragher delivering that ball into space in behind Gareth Barry. Barry at the moment is not quite sure whether he needs to match the runs of CC or just try and step out and, and play him offside. It's a big risk, we've seen that already. CC managing to stay onside. It's a strange position is taking. I mean, he's not right of a midfield, is he? He's sort no, of right. Not. And Morientes is in the middle, and then there's the midfield behind the two of them. Yeah, it's a, a clearly a 4-3-3, and Steven Gerrard has just got the opportunity to just roam around wherever he wants. is more confined to this part of the pitch. He can gallop, though. Yeah. Steven Gerrard's actually yelling across at Cissé, who's uh, looking a little sulkily at the spectators. He's what wondering, we know what the captain thinks, he wears his heart on his sleeve, but Cissé, ten goals this season, why am I out on the right-hand side? Well, because he's a threat there. That's the reason why he's out on the right-hand side, and at the moment, very nearly, very nearly, paying dividends. Kelly Phillips off. Juan Pablo Ankel on. Ankel, who wasn't involved at Manchester City on Monday, he was ill. Virus out of his system, and a bad run needs to get out of his system. He's not scored this season. Down goes Barosh. <laughs> Alonso's claiming that he took a big dive. <laughs> the reason why Barros. Me? He's having to uh, justify himself. Time they got a free kick. They didn't play the ball in straight away, Aston Villa, but they're doing it this time. It's too high for Melberg, though. Not many chances coming their way, is it? Aston Villa. So you really recall Rainer, certainly in the second half. Nothing too much to uh, deal with. McCann. has had a very quiet uh, time of it at Villa Park. It's really up to Aston Villa as the home team, the team trying to uh, push their way out of uh, trouble. So maybe play with a bit more conviction in the last third of this match. Short confidence, Martin, that's a problem. I mean, you know, the, the results uh, have taken its toll and there's uh, not many players really that are playing the best in their game. 
Here's the new arrival, Angel, but the flag is up. Look here from uh, James Milner that uh, catches Angel in an offside position and clearly is offside. Is reason for him to uh, to argue with the referee, but think, uh, Liverpool will be kicking themselves, Martin, if they don't come away with three points because I think they've been the better side, they've been more measured, been more controlled, and they've carried more of a threat. They are against one of the leakier defences in the Premiership. Sorensen uh, tidies up. moment it's a plus for David O'Leary that his uh, defence that he led the criticism of hasn't conceded here oh, they're hanging on a mixture of, uh, of luck some good goalkeeping and uh, one or two good pieces of defending not happy the goalkeeper because he wanted that playing back to his right foot rather than his left it's part and parcel of being a goalkeeper these days you have to deal with situations like that Morientes Javier Alonso. Now reset. Been the periods in his time at Liverpool, and you'd look to Risa as a possible way to decide a match like this. He's not scored since the Carling Cup final in February. He's been overly adventurous today, has he? I mean, he does like to get forward on that left-hand side. He just pack a punch with his left foot, can deliver useful balls into the box, but we haven't really seen him. Much of an advanced area. On his record is a, a winning goal on this ground. Finner. As you say, Brian, if they don't find a goal from somewhere, Liverpool, we'll look at this as uh, a wasted opportunity, I think. They would have thought that coming here, and uh, also the way the game is shaped up. Gerrard's cross. Barry told by Sorensen that he can take a, a measured piece of control on his chest. It needed to be cushioned properly though, and it was. Barrelling into uh, Liverpool players from Barosh. Zender, he's given it away. And it's the nature of the match at the moment. I just think with the amount of possession that Liverpool have had, you know, they should have done better. And what we've seen so far in uh, Villa haven't looked a particularly confident outfit. At times they've uh, defended in great numbers, but they haven't offered anything in an attacking sense. But, uh, I've seen a few Liverpool games this season, and, and you know this is a frustration, I guess, of the Liverpool fans. You know they, they see a side that are capable of certainly registering more victories than what they've seen in the league so far. They see an opponent here, the Liverpool fans see Aston Villa very, very short of any sort of belief. Ferrick Backer, who's entitled to be a bit ring rusty, he's hardly played over the last 12 months or so, putting it out to unchallenged. Prem plus regulars might recall uh, this time last Saturday. We've got a very late winner at Wigan. Barosh! Comes out to McCann. Ankel on side. Still, Ankel. Oh, he could have rolled it to Barosh. Maybe he didn't see it. Here goes Barry. Well, it's the first time really the fans have had something to shout about in this second period. And what a great opportunity that fell to one Pablo Angel. In fairness to the goalkeeper, Reyna. You know, he gets off his line very quickly. Closes down the space, and I think that surprises the Villa substitute. Here's Milner. No, he thought he was going to open his account for the season. Well, I think the key here is, uh, is the goalkeeper. It's a great ball from Ridgewell. They just go to sleep a little bit here at Liverpool. They think the ball's going to run out. It's a great block from Jamie Carragher. And when that ball's held back in, you know, Steve Finn is not really doing awful, an awful lot there. And there's the key to the big moment there that Angel has. Reina very, very quickly down at his feet, makes a good save. Mm. 
Milner. Big crossfield ball from the Colombian. Delaney. Now Barry. Oh, shot was speculative. There was uh, good movement. Just from the centre, slightly to the left from Ankel. So at the three-quarter mark in the match, enter Peter Crouch. Certainly gives him a different option now, doesn't he, uh, Morientes, who has been on the periphery of this game, hasn't really been a threat. Peter Crouch is searching for that elusive first goal, but you know, it'll be an opportunity now for Liverpool if they want to go a little bit more direct. That's a Villa paid over £5 million for him, and then moved him on a couple of years later to Southampton. Here's Barosh. Well, all of a sudden they found a little bit of belief on near the home side. Last ten minutes they've uh, just upped the tempo of their particular game and uh, they look far better for it. And just to remind you what the noise levels will be if Aston Villa could put the ball in the Liverpool net. Barry, Ridgewell, and Rainer can get their first clear quickly. Not just clear to his opposite number. It was a nice idea, wasn't it? He knew that uh, Cissek was up there against uh, a couple of Villa defenders. Mike Hell has uh, made an impact quickly. Here's Backer. And Kel charged down by Carragher. Not uh, any appeals from the fans, let alone the players. It's a great block, isn't it, from Jamie Carragher? All of a sudden now, a little pull back for her. Uh, and they withstand a little, a little bit of pressure. Well, this last 20 minutes could well be the best part of the match. Chilton hasn't got much to, uh, to beat in that respect. Here come Villa again. Ankel, the third man uh, wanting to be in the move, Barosh, and having uh, not spotted him a couple of minutes ago. This time he did, but couldn't find him. Gerard. The more Aston Villa open up, the more it might suit Liverpool. More room to play it. Gerard. Cisse. Crouch on the gallop and he uh, is able to keep it in. Senden making a run towards the near post. Gerard! It's a fantastic save by Thomas Sorensen from Steven Gerard. Well, he saved his football team today, Thomas Sorensen, and if they are to get anything out of it, it could be a big, big thank you to Thomas Sorensen. Peter Crouch times his run to perfection. And then when you're looking for the right sort of delivery, he does that. And Steven Gerrard is one of the few players on the pitch who really could have converted that chance. It's a fabulous save. Here's Barosh. Really trying to let himself loose at Liverpool. So pleased that he was uh, past fit to make his comeback today against the club that he's played for in the Premiership this season. Here's McCann. And there's no offside here, and it's Davis. And Barosh. And the goal roar dies in the throats of 30,000 or so Villa fans. Well, a decent first touch there, Martin. By Milan Barras, and that's a goal. They run out this Liverpool back four, and Stephen Davis is clearly in an onside position. And Rayner tries to dive at the feet of the midfield player, and that's where the touch let him down. It just given enough encouragement for Alonso. 
Davis. Just the same game that we've uh, sat through. <laughs> Told you it would get better. <laughs> Just a few moments after that brilliant piece of work by Sorensen, it did seem that Milan Barros was going to do uh, Aston Villa here what uh, Darius Vassell did for Manchester City against Aston Villa on Monday. Reina, that's where he doesn't always look quite the real deal. He's a, a very fine goalkeeper in most respects. Well, Sorensen has been superb in uh, keeping out Steven Gerrard in this Liverpool attack. That's a great strike, isn't it, from the Liverpool skipper, and uh, not an awful lot for him to aim at. He sees it late. He's got a lot of pace on this strike. That's a wonderful save. Really is a wonderful save. He's a mixture, isn't he, at times, Thomas Sorensen. We saw him come for a cross that he let go behind him, and he very nearly got punished, and then he's come up with two great saves that's kept his side in the game. But that save, not just getting to the ball, but having the strength in the arm to deal with the power in the shot. Stop it just rolling in behind him into the net. Crouch, eager to please, as you would expect. Gerard. It's ended. It's Crouch! Oh, what a chance. What a chance. If you want to break your duck as far as Liverpool, Peter Crouch, you're not going to get a better opportunity than this. And suddenly there are chances in a game that was rather a lame duck until uh, the last ten minutes or so. Milner wearing a, a throw out of Liverpool for Aston Villa. Davis, headed out by the worthy Carragher. Barosh. And what we've got now is uh, two teams who can believe they can win this game. And just rather see it through. Well, there were two sides that were devoid of any ideas, really, certainly in front of the goal, but uh, what an opportunity this is to Peter Crouch. He's there, he finds himself between the two centre-backs, only the goalkeeper to beat, he's only six yards out and he plants a header straight down the throat of the goalkeeper. Zenden. Gerard. Took the dropping ball beautifully. And ran into back his tackle. Davis. McCann. Been short of matches recently. And he's short of support here. Carragher will see this off. Well, Harry Kuehl. He's going to replace Gibril Cissé. Been a what might have been day for Gibril Cissé, particularly with that chance. Mm in the first half and then uh, in the second half when he's been working for the most part on the right-hand side and was giving uh, Villa some problems without actually uh, hurting them by setting up a goal. He's going to change it tactically again, Rafa Benitez. He's certainly rung the changes as far as personnel and systems are concerned here. Xabi Alonso. Zenden. Was there where Zenden expected to see him, but this time he couldn't find him. Well, what we'll go with now is uh, Zenden on that left hand side. Stephen Gerrard will come back to the right. Oh, it's back by Milner. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorensen not happy with the way he's been set up for his clearances by his teammates. thinking that he probably deserves better, and I think he probably does. Calibre of uh, a couple of the saves here. Zenden. So Zenden, Crouch, Kuehl, three of the substitutes in the uh, attacking third. Plenty of options, but uh, short of goals. 
Story of Liverpool season in the league so far. Well, one here at Villa Park might just be enough. Risa. Javi Alonso. Couldn't keep it down. I certainly fancy uh, Xavi Alonso to hit the target. Great technical ability. Certainly give him a lot of room, don't they? Encourage him to shoot here. Aston Villa's not too many players. The Claret and Blue shirt closing down. Have no alternative plans for Sunday afternoon. Manchester United meet Chelsea. Sky Sports 1 from 3. Say no more. Still 12 minutes to go between Aston Villa and Liverpool. Ball by Sissoko. Some been asking for handball. McCann. <laughs> got that wrong but it still fell to a teammate Not quite enough for pace on the ball to guide it on Javi Alonso Kuehl Gareth Barry sticking to his man though Akel for Barros Carragher just giving himself a yard apologised about to Jamie Carragher today Absolutely I think it's been brilliant. with justification. Yeah, absolutely brilliant, Martin. You're right. You know, he identified. Barros had some uh, space to run into, and he just gave himself some time. And that time is so crucial when you're a defender. Sissoko. Kuehl. Not quite got his bearings yet. I think there was much alternative to yeah. Steve Bennett. I was just saying, you're not going to give me uh, any alternative but to produce a yellow card. You know, poor tackle, then you pull the shirt of Angel. Sendon. To uh, enliven uh, the left hand side. Barry getting uh, almost in each other's way, but there's Carragher again. About the only thing that he can't do enough of is score goals. <laughs> Game 379, he's got three. <laughs> One of them was against Aston Villa. I tell you, he's paid to defend, not score goals. Mm. He's done that immaculately here today. That goal against Villa was in his uh, first full league match. So, uh, he started as if he was going to offer a bit more. <laughs> As a threat in that respect. And it's stopping others that he's turned into just an outstanding professional. And he's had to hurry to clear there from Barosh's raised boot. Crouch. Looked away from him by McCann. Melberg. Handball by Kuehl. And such is the nature of this game that a little incident like that could uh, turn out to be decisive. Before Villa take the free kick, though, they're going to uh, bring Lee Hendry into the game, making his comeback from uh, knee trouble in place of Eric Backer. Very much one of their own. Nothing worse than uh, cramp we're hearing for Backer. Melberg. Barosh. Here is Hendry. Cut out 
stopped by Risa. Andre settles for the throw. And settles for allowing Delaney to take it. Davis. The pullers, they've done well for the most part, stepping out and forcing Villa back. And even if they'd let them in there, no one was going to get to the ball. It's a disappointing uh, end product, isn't it, from Melbourne? They've had the moments, haven't they, Villa? Certainly in the last 20 minutes, and uh, so enough there to please the manager. Well, it'll be interesting to see what he has to say after the game, but he's just looking for some points on the on the board at the moment. Well, getting a clean sheet is a, a starting point. It's often mentioned when you're looking to recover from a bad run. And that clean sheet's not in the bag yet. Crouch. Xavi Alonso making sure there was enough pace on his pass to reach Zenden. Crouch. Penalty. Ridgewell wrapping himself around Crouch. Well, I don't think Ridgewell has to make this challenge, you know, because this ball's coming behind Peter Crouch. Zenden certainly offered a threat on that left hand side. But when this ball comes in, you know, they're both at it. And I think Lynn Redwell is a little bit unfortunate there because have a look at Peter Crouch there. He's also got hold of the Aston Villa defender. But all the referee sees is uh, Ridgewell being the guilty party. Well, Liverpool have got it. Now who's going to take it? The skipper is stepping up. Steve Bennett gave them a penalty, remember, at... Birmingham, just across town here. That gave them a draw in a game in which they were losing. This could well give them a win. Gerard does the job. Calm and composed. What you'd expect from your skipper. They'll feel uh, badly done by Aston Villa. And that uh, young man in particular. Been a difficult time for him over the last few weeks. He's having to learn the hard way. But uh, he really did slot it home with great aplomb. And I said earlier that Liverpool would be kicking themselves if they didn't win this game because they've had the majority of the possession in the second period in particular. They came in controversial circumstances. It doesn't really matter how they come. That Liverpool badge still means the world to Steven Gerrard. Well, he's scored the goal. It's his tenth of the season, incidentally. But Peter Crouch involved in it. And uh, down he goes. Barry's challenge. That was another big decision for Steve Bennett. Crouch is uh, looking across at the assistant for a bit of influence in the referee's ear, but that's not forthcoming. Zenden tracking back. Gareth Barry, who was booked in the first half. Finnan. Liverpool not settling for what they've uh, got late in the game and have probably deserved. Here's Kuehl, Zenden. Think about cutting it back for Kuehl, he's looking for Peter Crouch. They're trying so hard to get him a goal, but he's been involved here. He was the player pulled down by Ridgewell for the penalty. Well, as Gareth Barry comes across here, I think that's just a, a shoulder charge and that's where Peter Crouch has got to be stronger. You know, he works himself into a decent opening. It's a clever ball from Steven Gerrard. And Hendry gives it away. Crouch chasing. And Aston Villa now chasing the game. For the four minutes or so that remain. It's a tough time for it. He's going to have to battle his way out of it. Hasn't got the resources to change an awful lot as far as personnel. He's given the most penalties in the Premiership this season. I know the season's not that uh, not that old, but uh, Steve Bennett does not duck the issue. No, he doesn't. And, and it'll be interesting to see what he does see when this ball comes in the box from Zenden, because you know Peter Crouch looks as if he's he's got hold of Ridgewell. Ridgewell's clearly done the same to him. But I think all that Steve Bennett does see is the Villa player committing a foul. And he's convinced enough to give 
Liverpool a penalty. Carragher. And it looks as though those uh, splendid Sorensen saves are going to be in vain, but McCann hasn't given it up yet. Tenson losing out to Javi Alonso. Kewell. Here's Gerrard. by Ridgewell, the goalkeeper is coming, he probably could have got to the ball they need to get it forward Barry's lost out and Liverpool can look dangerous again, Kewell Ouch. good set of studs away but he's in this time Javi Alonso, 2-0 well Sorensen's been the saviour You'd have to say he's guilty of a big mistake there. It's a terrific strike from Xavi Alonso. Villa at the moment have been all over the place since he conceded that goal. And uh, it was a great challenge initially from Melbourne that keeps out Peter Crouch because Crouch looked as if he was odds on when he gets the ball back in from Zenden. And Melbourne does brilliantly there. That's a terrific strike. They're taking nothing away from what Alonso produces from the edge of the box, but. Really, the goalkeeper will look at this again and think, I should have saved this. But it's passed him before he realises it. And if there was a controversial circumstances behind the first goal, then really, that strike from Xavi Alonso puts it now out of doubt. Villa Park is emptying fast. They were in the contest for long periods, even though uh, it was a case more of what Liverpool were failing to do than what Aston Villa were doing. But it's certainly now going to be five defeats in six for David O'Leary. And Rafa Benitez seems to have cracked it at last, a midweek European win and a win on the subsequent Saturday in the Premiership. Do them all a lot of good. I mean, uh, three on the bounce. We still know that there's an awful lot of work to be done, though. Risa. Sissoko. Crouch. Three added minutes. Well, no one would pretend that for 80 minutes this was the best of the Premiership. But one thing you do know about the game in this country, mm. you get value for money, it goes right to the last. And it's been a, a late show from Liverpool. That is a throwback to the, uh, the great Liverpool teams of the past. And a win achieved in the latter stages. Steven Gerrard took on the responsibility from the penalty. And then Javi Alonso hammered home his chance and hammered a nail, a final nail in the coffin of Aston Villa today. They certainly haven't been at their best Liverpool, but uh, they've done enough. And uh, at times, you, know, you have to dig in. Things are not going particularly well. Show character, spirit, determination things that I'm sure that Rafa Benitez will talk about as far as his side goes but uh, there's one thing I mean, a big performance from that man at the back Jamie Carragher well, Carragher's misjudged one but with a two goal cushion he can get away with it and he's helped out by Risa But what is going to help Aston Villa here? Badly short of confidence, that's uh, been in evidence even when they were level for much of the game. Hendry. And they spotted that well, Rayner. I'm sure David O'Leary will be challenging one or two of his players come Monday morning, Martin, that they're going to have to stand up and be counted. It's a difficult time really is Your confidence is low you can see that in their performance today you can't feel sorry for yourself gonna spin crouch's way he made sure it didn't 
It's about the only thing in the last 10 minutes that Liverpool have lacked is a Peter Crouch goal. And it hasn't been for the want of him being in the right position. He should have scored with a header. It looks as though he was going to evade Melberg's block. It was uh, on the receiving end of Ridgewell's challenge for the moment that uh, really has uh, decided the destiny of this game. Apparently was a big moment in this game because uh, Steven Gerrard did convert and it gave this Liverpool side confidence to go on and, and get another. It's an offside here, Sendin has timed his uh, movement forward and he's good enough to get the a dropping ball under control. this first for Rafa Benitez in England a midweek European win and three points the following Saturday in the Premiership but for David O'Leary precious little cause for cheer for his 100th match as Villa's manager like 95 and 96 and 98 and 99 it's ended in defeat the goals from a Steven Gerrard penalty which uh, Aston Villa may well dispute in the after match debate and a second from Javi Alonso but around the bonfires in Birmingham tonight the burning issue will be what does the future hold for Aston Villa Liverpool leave for the northwest with three points final score Aston Villa nil Liverpool two thanks to Brian and to Martin yes another miserable home performance uh, by Aston Villa but Liverpool moving in the right direction bottom of the table Villa still in 16th place just nine points from 12. Remember their worst start to a season for 35 years and it's getting even worse. Liverpool began the weekend in 13th place. They've climbed four. They're up to ninth. 16 from 10. They've still got a game in hand on some of the teams above them so they could be nestling inside the top six in the not too distant future. More live football to look forward to from the Premiership this afternoon. At Fratton Park. Wigan will look to extend their remarkable run of five successive league victories. Portsmouth are on a high after their 4-1 success at Sunderland last weekend. Five o'clock Sky Sports 2. Football first, 8.25 this evening on Sky Sports 1. And it's Villarreal against Valencia from La Liga, 8.30 on Sky Sports Extra. A third successive home defeat for Aston Villa, the first time they've suffered that in five years. We'll have George's thoughts after the break. He got his prediction spot on. And Xabi Alonso got his finishing spot on at just the right time to boost the European champions. So at the 13th attempt, Liverpool have won a domestic game after a Champions League outing. Controversial penalty though that put them on their way. Steven Gerrard made no mistake, his second league goal of the season, 10th altogether. And a few moments later they made sure Xabi Alonso Sorensen saw it late. Villa's woeful home form is extended. Liverpool's first away win of the season in the Premiership. Villa staying in 16th place. They'll be looking nervously over their shoulder this afternoon and perhaps for the remainder of the season. But Liverpool are climbing from 13th up to 9th for the moment. Some significant changes possible over the course of the weekend. And don't forget Super Sunday tomorrow, Manchester United only in seventh at the moment against Chelsea. Well, the penalty, clearly the talking point, seven minutes from time. Uh, Steve Bennett was convinced you're not quite so sure, George. No, not 100% penalty for me. I think both of them were tussling. The arms are uh, Crouch at his arm round Ridgewell, Ridgewell, Ridgewell at his arm round Crouch. It wasn't 100% penalty for me. Two of them wrestling there. Referee's got a very good view of it. He's yeah. just there, top of the screen. It's all about, all about opinion, Marcus. And when, for when, me, when that's not. When a defender starts wrapping his arm around a striker, though, he's, he's just been a, yeah, a little bit. You, you'll me. see a lot of them, you know, every week. You know, and that, that will not be given a penalty. Interestingly, Steve Bennett's given more penalties than any other referee this season. Five in ten games, put away very well by Stephen Gerrard, yeah, as you'd finish. expect. Very, very good finish. And, I'm just surprised it took Liverpool, you know, so long to, to get in the lead. 
But even saying that, I thought Villa in the second half, Marcus, actually came back into the game. They put a bit of pressure on the, the Liverpool, and it was only time the Liverpool defence began to look a little bit suspect. And that's where Jamie Carragher, you know, was outstanding. Well, Jamie Carragher has been named as the man of the match. We can hear from him and also from uh, Stephen Gerrard. They're both talking to Guy Havard. Jamie, at last you followed up a good Champions League result with a good one in the Premiership. Yeah, I don't know, it's something that everyone talks about. It's a bit annoying for ourselves, really want to put it right. And that's the first time we've run away from home this season as well, so that was a first for us as well. So, you know, we want to put this, you know, obviously keep doing as well as we can in Europe, but we've got to, do, you know, improve a lot in the Premiership and hopefully this is just going to be the start of a decent run for us. What was the difference today, do you think? We scored two goals and kept a clean sheet. I mean, we've kept a few clean sheets this season away from. We haven't scored, and when we scored a couple, we've you know we've conceded as well. So it's about getting the balance right, and you know you've got to keep it tight away from. We had a few chances when it was nil-nil as well. So you know, fortunate enough for us to come out winners. Stephen, what were your thoughts as you went up to take that penalty? Three points. Um, we've done okay on the road this year. Uh, there's been an improvement from last year, but we're out getting three points, and it was important that the penalty went away to put us on the road for three points. Hence the three fingers to the uh, Liverpool fans, yeah? Yeah, it's been frustrating for them. You know, they've followed us everywhere, supported us really well, and we haven't really delivered on the road, so uh, it was nice to get three points today. Was it a penalty, did you think? I didn't see the incident, to be yeah, honest. Jamie's yeah. nodding. Yeah, I think, I know, I never, I never see any incident, but, you know, speaking to Peter, he said he was all over him, so yeah, I think it was good refereeing because he got the decision right. Jamie, you thought he got it right? Yeah, it looks as if he was trying to climb on his back. Yeah, what, what do you think now? I'm asking you, don't I'm neutral. That was fair, the way you've seen the replay, so what do you think? Again, very neutral. <laughs> <laughs> um, just tell us what you think this win will do. As you say, it's a first away win in the Premiership this season for Liverpool. Well, hopefully it gives us more confidence away from We've done quite well away from home, you know. Crept a lot of clean sheets, which have turned into draws. But the main thing is to get three points, and especially when you're playing early kickoff, it puts pressure on the teams now. So no matter what happens, we can obviously go down the table. I think we can only go up now. What I can say, certainly, Jamie, is that you are the uh, man of the match. Many congratulations. Well, you. Deserve that, well done. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Guy Havard back to the United Nations <laughs> after that diplomatic performance, but an important win for Liverpool. They have struggled after European games, as Stephen Gerrard said yeah. there, they've struggled on the road. Could prove to be a significant afternoon for them. Yeah, Marcus, they've got a lot of quality in midfield, as I said, Gerrard, you've got Alonso, um, and these are the, the people who get a grip of the game, but I still think, you know, they've got problems in the attack and third of the pitch. They've got their build-up player, they had possession, but they've got to score goals, and I don't, I just don't think they've got the real, real Liverpool quality uh, up front. Well, having got the first today, they quickly added the second to kill off Villa's hopes once and for all. Peter Crouch, of course, had come on, and, and at the start of the move that led to the penalty, he had a, a neat little touch. He's involved again here. Yeah. They did seem to look a little more potent when he came on. Yeah, but, I mean, there's, n there's never been any question, Marcus. He's got great feet. I had him as a youngster at Tottenham. Got a lovely touch. Um, and he did create problems, and obviously Ridgewell obviously knew that, and that's why he wrestled onto the ground for the penalty. And Melberg actually does very well to block the opportunity for him here. Do you criticise Sorensen a little bit for not stopping Alonso? No, shot? I think it's just saw it. He probably saw it a bit late, down at his feet again, on the ground, right along the ground there, and there was just too much power in it. Good power. Good power. But it just, it just shows you, Villa actually improved in the second half and actually they could have took the lead. And I think if Villa have taken the lead, I think they may have just hang on, hung on. Well, I suspect that David O'Leary may have one or two things to say about the penalty incident in particular. We can hear from him now because he's talking with Guy. David, was it a penalty? I don't think it was definitely not a penalty. But, uh, as I say, it changed the total game. And, uh, but I felt all through he... he you know, he couldn't wait to give decisions, particularly for Liverpool, or give it for name players. And uh, But look, I've got to watch what we say, because they're very precious people. And um, we've just got to bite the lip on it. But uh, I thought it was a terrible, terrible decision. Richwell seemed to have an arm around it, but, but crouched likewise beforehand. There's going to you know, be a lot of penalties given if, as I say, if that's all going to be going on. Look, it wasn't a penalty, end of story. The referee has cost us the game, it's changed the game, end of story. Because it looks as if you were hanging on for a point, didn't it? Um, I'm not hanging on for a point. They were hanging on as well. I think it was, the game at that became end-to-end -end stuff. We had a few chances there we could have done better with. So it wasn't a case of us hanging on. I think the game was pretty uh, even, Stephen, at that time. And it uh, could have gone either way. And, uh, but that changed it totally, in my belief. After what happened recently, you would have been happy with a point? I'm, 
I'm happy with the performance of the back four. I thought they, uh, as I say, kept the higher line where I want us to play. Um, we defended better. Uh, I know we can do better as well, but uh, that was a more that was more solid for us today, without a doubt. Just need to maybe create a few more chances up front. Um, what we need to do is keep going and get a bit of luck because everything is going against us at the moment, and uh, that's not making excuses. Just as I say, we've got to keep battling. Good set of players there that we've got to dig ourselves out of this and things will change for us. But as I say, that penalty, uh, I just couldn't believe I've given it. In ways then I could, uh, without contradicting myself, because I felt he was his decision making throughout the game was, you know, funny. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks. Well, this time last week it was Chris Coleman bemoaning a couple of controversial <laughs> decisions. Obviously, David's made yeah. his feelings very clear about that penalty. Let's have a another look. Um, you know, you can understand clearly why he is a little disturbed by the decision. But if a defender does put his arms around a striker, George. There's always a chance a penalty is going to be given. Both of them have got their arms around one another, there, Marcus. And I said at the time, you know, it's not for me a stonewall penalty. And as David O'Leary says there, he made a good point. If you're going to get a penalty for that, there should be quite a few penalties every week. Mm. But uh, Villa not, never really looked like scoring. I mean, he says there that they were, the game was quite equal. I, don't, I think if they wouldn't have got the penalty, I think the game would have finished 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, they've only scored six times at home all season. This was perhaps their best chance. It, it fell to Milan Barros. And that's clearly going to be a concern. They are leaking goals and, and quite clearly they are not scoring enough. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the Liverpool keeper didn't make many saves, Mark. It's as simple as that. And that's what you look at. At the end of the game, you, you actually look at both goalkeepers and see who actually worked the hardest. Villa just the one shot on target, on target. in the whole 90 yeah. minutes. It's strange, though, because you, you look yes. at Barros, you look at Kevin Phillips, Kevin you look Phillips. at Juan Pablo Angel, Angel three yeah. players who, who've proved they can do it in the past. Well, park. it just shows you then that either, you know, they're conceding goals, there's no question about it. I think before today, they were the, the third one uh, worst goal scoring against. So they're obviously conceding goals. Now they've got to start, start about building, building up, building the moves to sort of make goals and then to convert them and as you said there I think they've got the, the strikers to finish them but they've got to win the midfield battle first. The one thing that George was purring about throughout the 90 minutes was, was Liverpool's defending inspired by Jamie Carragher. Um, <laughs> we saw the pass or, or, or the, the tackle in particular in the first half but they do seem to be well disciplined as a unit which is something of course you've based your success on. Yeah I mean you know you can see that they're working at it. I love the way they hold the line. They, OK, they, they, they catch the opposition off, off, offside a lot, but uh, there's no question, Jamie Carragher, he's the, the main man in the, the back four, he never stops talking, you can see his leadership qualities closed down there. Um, I thought when Villa had a good spell in the second half, he was the main man, he was the one doing all the, the talking, you know, the leadership qualities, good tackle there again. You made the point before the game that you felt Liverpool's real strength was in their midfield, but having seen the way they defended today, uh, are you encouraged that they can achieve greater success because of this growing solidity? If you, uh, solidity look, at, at if the you look at them individually, eh, Marcus, they're probably not the best individually in the Premiership by, by a long way. But collectively, they must be working hard, making the four individuals into a good unit. And if you can organise that, you can, that's a long way to keeping a lot of clean sheets, what they're doing at the present time. OK, here is Rafa talking with Guy. Rafa, David O'Leary is adamant it shouldn't have been a penalty. What was your view of the incident? I think for me it's clear, it's a penalty. Watching the TV on the pitch, as a manager you can say one thing and the other manager another thing, but watching the TV when you catch the, the other player is a penalty. You thought he was wrestled down? I think it's clear and the most important thing for me is not the penalty, it's uh, uh, how we play. No? We play well, we play organised, compact and we go forward, we create uh, chances and then I think that uh, we deserve to, to win. But for Thomas Sorensen, you probably would have been ahead before that penalty incident. I don't think so. I think that we were uh, doing our job and controlling the game and creating chances. But Sorensen made some good saves, didn't he, before oh, yeah. the penalty? Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. We have uh, Cissé in one uh, against one and another uh, Schultz and OK, he was playing well. That means that uh, our team was going forward. Peter Crouch seemed to make a difference when he came on. He obviously won the penalty, but things changed a bit for Liverpool. Yeah, I, I say many times uh, when people talk about if he must score, he must give to us things like today. Keep the ball, winning in the air, a penalty and then we had more possession and we could control the game. 
You started off 4-4-2, but changed tactics early in the first half. Why was that? Because we have seen that with Cissé in the right side, we create more uh, uh, danger to them. And we go with him wide and forward, and uh, Gerard between the lines create also a lot of um, opportunities. Then, OK, it was better for us. And at last, a Champions League win in midweek, and now a Premiership win as well. Yeah, we have another clean sheet. We scored two goals. We win away. We win after a Champions League game. Then we change all the statistics. A lot happier today, yes? Yeah, very, very happy. Thanks for your time. Thank you. A lot happier. Rafa thinks.